Good morning. It's lovely to be with you. Um, this week we're in All Saints Church in Ringsfield, which is a beautiful little church, um, hugely remodelled uh, in the late 1800s um, by Butterworth, uh, who wanted the church to look how the Victorians imagined churches uh, should look. Um, and many of our churches up and down the country have a look that actually is Victorian, their idea of what church looks like. But it's a beautiful church, um, a lovely church. Um, it made the headlines, well, made nationwide, for those who can remember the nationwide program, um, a long time ago um, when we had a robin uh, nesting in our lectern and the actual nest uh, remains there to this day. Before we think about uh, our Bible story this morning, we're going to sing to the light of the world. Here I am to worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together wonderful to me And I'll never know how much it cost To see my sin upon that cross I'll never know how much it cost To see my sin upon that cross here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Light of the world. You step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Spent with you. Our Bible reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 15, uh, beginning to read at verse 21. The Canaanite woman's faith. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. 
my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Oh, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Perhaps a slightly diff difficult passage for us to understand, and so we need to open our eyes, open our ears, to see and hear our Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scandalous. A woman, a Canaanite woman, dares to speak to Jesus, seeking healing for her demon-possessed daughter. And so the disciples urge Jesus, oh, send her away, because she's not who the message is for. No. The message was for the Israelites, for God's people of the promise. Jesus emphasizes this himself by saying, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But she persists, kneeling before him and saying, Lord, help me. And then Jesus says something to which our ears is extraordinary. It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. But among those around him, among the disciples, there would have been nods of approval. She was a Canaanite, a non-Jew, a dog. And Jesus was simply addressing her as she would have expected any Jew to address her. But quick as a flash, she responds, even the dogs uh, eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And seeing her faith, Jesus replies, woman, you have great faith, your request is granted. Was he testing her persistence? Possibly. 
Was he testing her faith? Again, that may have been part of it. Or actually, was he trying to say something to his disciples gathered round him? They were expecting him to tell her just to go away. He'd come to the Israelites. He'd restricted himself to talking in their synagogues, to speaking with scribes and Pharisees. What he had to say and do had nothing to do with the Canaanites, the Romans, the Greeks, the dogs. And so he spoke in a way that they expected. But here's the, what I think. I think that he may have given her a little smirk, a little sly wink, as if to say, it's okay. This is for them to understand. I'm going to teach them something here. And he says, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And as he says that, there would have been drawers dropping to the floor in amazement and bewilderment. Jesus was gradually introducing the idea that this message that he has come to bring is for all people. You see, Israel was and is called to be the beacon. Right from the start, God said to Abraham, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Through Isaiah, I the Lord have called you in righteousness to be a covenant for the people and a light to the Gentiles. The psalmists exhorted the Israel to proclaim among the nations what God has done. And Simeon, on seeing the baby Jesus, declared, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. So yes, for Jesus, the Israelites were the starting point, calling them to share in declaring the kingdom of God to all the nations. Now, in preparing for this, I looked at uh, most of my uh, commentaries that I have, and they seem to like to link this episode, uh, the Canaanite woman, with the story a little earlier in Matthew 8 of the faith of the centurion. In both episodes, there is healing at a distance. Neither the centurion nor the Canaanite woman were Jews. But in the case of the centurion, if you go back and read Matthew chapter 8, Jesus seems to be instantly willing for the healing to go ahead. Whereas in our story today, Jesus seems reluctant at first. I think that there's a stronger link with the passive, between our passage and the passage immediately before our reading. In verses 10 to 20 of chapter 15, if you've got a Bible, do look it up. Jesus talks about the fact that it's not what is eaten or a lack of ritual washing that makes people unclean. It's what comes out of the heart as seen in speech and thought and action. That's what makes people unclean. And by saying this, Jesus had upset the Pharisees for whom ritual purity was the be-all and end-all, and the disciples tried warning him about it. Do you not know that the Pharisees are offended by when they hear this? You see, Jesus had reinterpreted a central teaching on cleanliness. Or rather, he pointed out the spirit of the law rather than the strict adherence of the law. Jesus was challenging the disciples' thinking. And this meeting with the Canaanite woman gives him a further opportunity to test them, to stretch the envelope, as we would perhaps now say. The Israelites, yes, were God's chosen people, chosen not to keep them in isolation from the world, but chosen to be a blessing in the world, to be a light directing the world to God. Jesus still 
challenges people's thinking. He challenges our thinking. That's why he calls us disciples, learners, constantly learning new things about him. We cannot be stagnant and stationary as Christians. It's a journey. We always move forward. As Paul wrote, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put childish ways before me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. We see dimly in a mirror. That doesn't mean that we stop looking at it and trying to understand more and more of what we can see. And Jesus challenges us about our faith as he did with the disciples. You say this, but what do you mean? You say, I believe in God, but what do you mean by God? You sing, think in the great is thy faithfulness, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Is that what you truly believe, that God's hand has truly provided everything, all that you need? And as Jesus calls us to walk on water, as he calls us to throw out our nets on the other side, we'll find ourselves challenged about the views that we may hold dear. We'll hear the voice of Jesus and God saying, why do you do those things in a certain way? Why do you use the liturgy that you do? Why do you stand up to sing? Why do you kneel to pray? As we plan for the future, as we focus on mission, there may, there will be times when ch God challenges our thinking. It may be as individuals, as God challenges us to think about our vocation, what we, he is calling us to do, to be. As churches, as individual parishes, we, we seek to minister to the people where they live. He may be, he'll ch offer us challenges there. And as a benefit, strengthening our ties with each other so that we can focus on God's mission. God's going to challenge us. It's going to be tough. It may hurt sometimes, but it will always be for the good. God will strengthen our ties with one another. God challenges us, challenges our thinking so that we can focus on mission, focus on God's invitation to join in with the divine dance. Amen. And so we're going to sing of God's invitation to join in the dance, the Lord of the dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. I bent me hem, I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said it was a shame They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high And left me there on a cross to die Dance then wherever you may be 
I am Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dancer and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. So as God calls us to focus on mission, may our eyes be open our ears be open to see and hear where God is calling us, where he is challenging us in our thinking. And again, the wonderful thing is that we do it together, we do it as a community. Proverbs says, as man, uh, as stone sharpens stone, uh, no it's not, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. It's about discussion. It's about grappling with God's word, grappling with our understanding and grappling with what he is calling us to do and be. We do it as a community and we encourage one another as that community. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always.